Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. <sighs> Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Ram, Hare Ram. Oh, I still have eight rounds left. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Okay, let's talk about that. I know you've done that before. We need to talk about this. This is the worst thing you could do. The holy name Krishna has come to you. He's, this Krishna is in his name. It's the mercy of Mahaprabhu who has uh, given us this premanam. Krishna is fully present in his name. And then, Hi Krishna, Hi Krishna. What are you saying to Krishna when you're chanting that way? Well, I think, well, let's say we are chanting that way. I don't want to say you. What are we saying to Krishna when we're chanting that way? Uh, this is boring. I don't really want to do this. Why do I have to do this? Why? And 16, why? Can we just do four? And those principles, you know, that fourth principle, that's a tough one. Why not? Like, could we just have three? 3.26 or something like that? Why would we think this way? Because we're making offenses to the holy name. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur said, Krishna is absent. Yes, he said that. And I know this is shocking news to you because it's not the way generally Prabhupada formulated his explanation of the holy name. Prabhupada said, Krishna is dancing on your tongue. Yeah, Krishna is standing on the altar. He's dancing. Do you see it? It requires some qualification. But Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said, Krishna is absent. Absent in offensive chanting. He's not there. What's the proof? Can you get anything from offensive chanting other than something material? You cannot advance doing offensive chanting. You not, cannot even come to Anartha Nivritti doing offensive chanting because Krishna is not there in your Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Well, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, uh, excuse me, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur said, the cause of all offenses is inattentive chanting, and he described it as distraction, laziness, and apathy. And I think what I just demonstrated by my little drama is a perfect demonstration of laziness, apathy, and distraction. This is the big enemy. When we chant, we should take it as seriously as we've taken anything in our life because our spiritual life really rests primarily on the quality of our chanting. The symptom of an advanced devotee is his or her taste for chanting. The symptom of an advanced devotee is they want to chant. The symptom of an advanced devotee is they don't want to stop chanting. Even if they have to stop to do their seva, they want to continue chanting. The symptom of an advanced devotee is not, oh no, here we go again. It's going to be so hard. Hey Krishna, hey Krishna. I wish I didn't have to do this. If we translate your mantra, it starts sounding like, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. You do a little cartoon and transform it with a bubble, and it starts sounding like, I wish I didn't have to chant. It's so hard, so boring. I just don't like it. These are symptoms. It's actually not funny. These are, you may be laughing now, but you should actually be crying. These are symptoms of offensive chanting because Krishna is not present. And what is the symptom when you chant? Trying to avoid the ten offenses. Taste. You want to taste this. Oh, this is so sweet. Hare Krishna. Krishna, please. This is so nectarian. Just please engage me in your service. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare 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 Ram. Hare Ram. Ram Ram. Hare. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling your love, your mercy. I'm appreciating this great gift of the holy name that you've given to me. I'm I'm feeling this connection with you. I'm feeling your presence. That's what it's supposed to be like. 
And when it's like that, then you're going to look forward to chanting. It's going to be the greatest experience of your day, the greatest experience of your life. But if you don't make the effort and you're just thinking, ah, I don't want to do this. It's boring. I don't like it. Why do we have to do this? Why so many rounds? Why can't we do less? Where's your spiritual life going to go? Because your spiritual life is based on it. Oh, Prabhu, I love kirtan, but japa. Well, it's not japa. It's just, it just doesn't do it for me. I have some great news for those of you who just like kirtan and don't like japa. It's the same mantra. Oh, yeah. I never really. Yeah, it is the same mantra. Yeah, it's the same mantra. It just requires a certain mentality to pierce it. It's a different mentality than kirtan, but it's the same mantra. And you can pierce it, you can do it, but you have to make the effort. It's not just going to happen. It's not that, well, I'll just chant and wait, and you know, I'll become purified by chanting, and someday it's all the magic's going to happen. There is some truth to that, but still, you have to make effort. And I'll end with a quote. This is a paraphrase because I don't remember it exactly, but Srila Bhakti Siddhanta said something amazing. He said, without sincere effort, you won't get mercy. And if you don't get mercy, you won't advance. So you can't just schnick schnick, wom wom, and hope one day, you know, the mercy is just going to fall from the sky. It doesn't work that way. You have to make sincere effort. And then Krishna says, oh, he wants mercy. I'm going to give it to him. That's how it works.